Hey guys, so today I'm going to talk about how to create a template inside Sitecore. Uh, if you're going to be developing anything new inside Sitecore, it's important to kind of understand this topic. Um, so today's session, I'm just going to show how to create one of my favorite examples, which is a article template, um, which will have various types of fields on it. So to do that, I've already created a blog um, which is basically a folder that contains articles. Um, typically, I would create articles that actually are bucketed by default. I'm not going to cover that topic today in this session, but I will probably be covering this uh, coming up soon. So uh, be on the lookout for that. Uh, so to create a template, first off, you will be working outside of the templates uh, folder underneath Sitecore. So if you in, uh, open up the templates area, you'll see that there's typically there's a user defined folder. There may be a sample uh, folder. This is where um, by default on your default instance, uh, when you create it, it will create a bunch of sample items um, unless you use some sort of clean slate um, package to clean out those items. Um, or also um, you will also see a system area, which uh, basically defines bunch of templates that are system level templates. Um, and then there's also usually typically a few other folders. There's common, which contains a folder uh, template, as well as a list manager, which is something for XDB or, or with the uh, kind of built-in CRM for Sitecore. Um, and then lastly, uh, typically what I would do is create a folder that represents your project or your, your overall solution that you're building. So since I'm building example um, templates, I've created an example folder. And inside this folder, how you architect your templates or how do you uh, organize your templates is up to you. Um, typically, in the past, I've done this by um, just kind of creating high-level folders that represent the templates I'm creating. So. Um, at some point in the future, I'm going to sh uh, kind of showcase base, the base template best practices. Um, so this is where I would put all my base templates. And, and uh, in that uh, tutorial, I'll also show you kind of why you'd want to create base templates for a lot of items that you're creating. Um, next is uh, configuration. You might have uh, things that appear in a global area or is related to settings, things like that for your site, I usually typically put in a configuration folder. Uh, content is, is actually what we're going to do today. We're going to create an article template, which is, in my mind, a type of content. Um, and you might have folders that contain multiple types of different types of items. So, uh, for example, the blog that I already created, I consider that a a folder so it, it just basically is used for containing other items uh, which is very important if you want to kind of control uh, where content can be added um, lastly there's there's two other folders I have here uh, one is called pages uh, so these are just standalone basic pages uh, these could sometimes be considered folders as well because blog is technically a page uh, slash blog um, is a page that usually would have listings of articles on it in a traditional blog architecture. Um, and uh, lastly is parameters. These are used for rendering parameters. Um, so if you have renderings that you're creating and you want to, you know, give it parameters that you would uh, set when you're when you're in the PLID or when you're in the experience editor, you want to say, hey, um, I have a, a six by six grid and I want to have specific rendering parameters that are related to that. As you can see, uh, I have a CSS class here that I can set to um, these renderings. Um, so that's that's the quick and easy and just a, a quick, a quick uh, you know, re representation of what why a folder structure like that. Um, I've been thinking about changing this structure. There's, there's some. Um, if you looked at Habitat or if you looked at SXA, it's actually doing it a little differently. So um, I've been thinking about changing this structure a little bit. So um, you know, it, it's 
it, it's a good starting point if you're just starting out to kind of do a structure similar to this. But um, as you get to know and work with more instances of Sitecore, you kind of come up with your own structures that, that make sense for your organization or your project that you're working on. So I'm going to go ahead and just create a new template. Uh, this is going to go inside that content folder. So I right clicked on content and I just said insert new template. Now you can by default just set it to uh, uh, come from standard template. Um, which is the kind of default template for these, or you can specify um, other templates to come from. So first off, let's talk about the name. So typically, uh, if you're working with glass or anything like that, I'd, I'd prefer names that are at least the item name that is, you know, a single string, so no spaces. But so if you had article content here, I would actually make it one word. Um, and then you could always change the display name to be just uh, have the space in it, but as long as your item name is not. Um, uh, typically in the past, what I'll do is I'll actually create custom save actions or save events um, that know that it's a template that you're changing. So it automatically changes. So if you put it in a bunch of spaces, it will actually shrink and cut that down to one word. For the item name and then the display name will stay as with spaces in there so uh, so we'll call this article and then lastly like I said this is you can leave a standard template by default or if you've already defined some base templates up in example like I have um, such as base content and typically uh, these folder structures I like to have a base for each of them so base configuration base content base folder base pages you get the, the picture um, so that if you ever have a bunch of content and you find that you want to set something to all those content types, you can actually just do that in the base content and in the inheritance. And, and there, therefore, the inheritance kind of helps. And then also, uh, you don't have to go manually make changes to all of them. Um, and then all the these base content or base uh, templates also inherit from base. I'll cover this more in a base uh, a base discussion that I'll cover at some point in the future. Um, but for this, I'm going to select base content. Um, and then I'll just say next. And it's just saying where it's going. Click next. Click continue. Now I've got this template. Um, you'll notice that the one I selected, base content, now shows up in the base template uh, field, which is basically a, um, it's basically a, a tree list view that allows you to select multiple templates that you can inherit this this template from. Uh, you'll notice that it's also inheriting from uh, templates.templates. So this is one of the areas that confused me the most when I started building templates is that there's the concept of having every, every item has only one template theoretically, but because this is a coming from a template uh, template, it's very confusing saying it like that, but because of its type of template is this template, it actually includes additional fields, and one of those fields is a base template, which allows you to select multiple, uh, basically multiple templates that this item inherits from. So uh, when you select uh, multiple base uh, bases or even just multiple templates that you want this item to inherit from, it's going to take all these items, it's going to pull all the fields from these items, and then when you create content from article, the article template, let's say you create a new article item, it will take all these fields, all the fields that make up all these base templates, and allow you to make changes to all those fields. Um, so that's important to know uh, when you create a template. Just make sure that you have this template selected, because if you use this template, base, temp, or base content, as the template itself, you're not going to have this field, and you're also going to notice a lot of weird issues with your um, with your template, and also with the with the item itself that you create from article. It won't have some of the things that you'd expect to see in it, um, such as some of the standard fields, etc. So uh, now that we've defined that, uh, you like I said, you could theoretically um, define other base types. I don't really have any examples here, but let's say you wanted base and you want a base folder. You could do it from all those. I don't 
I don't think that makes sense for this. So I'm just going to have it in here for base content. So I'll save that. Um, lastly, I always like to set an icon for my templates. This just makes every item or every item that you create from this template will have that icon, and it just makes it a little easier to, um, you know, it helps organize and and structure your content so that uh, you know, oh, I see that icon. Well, I must be working on a you know article template, for example. So I'll just I'll just use this one because it's uh, a little bit uh, more specific to an article. So now I have this icon. You'll always set the icon on the actual template. Um, I showed in the last demo how to create standard or a previous demo on how to create standard values. So I'll also do that. But you'd always create the icon on the actual template itself, not on the standard values. <coughs> so I've created that. Um, so now what I want to do is create some fields. Um, so first off, before you start defining a field for a template, you will want to define a section. Uh, so typically, I will give these um, kind of broad uh, names of a section. Uh, you can call these whatever you want. I've seen it called data, or um, if this was some sort of specific thing like let's say this is meta tag information you might call it meta tags something like that um, I typically like to call this something generic for the the basic fields uh, such as information and the reason I like to do that is um, I was showing before those base templates so let's say I had different types of articles and I created some sort of base article um, on that base article, I had title and I had um, description, and they all sat underneath this same section. Um, but then I had specific types of articles. So I had um, a press release, for example, that inherits from that base article. And it has um, some sort of published date or some sort of author or something like that. So, and if I put it underneath information, if when I go to create that press release as a, a content that inherits from the, the press release template, which has the base template set to base article, what it's going to do, since I've used the same section name, it's actually going to combine all those fields from the base article as well as the press release and list them underneath information, which is kind of cool. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, this is kind of going back to the base base templates um, kind of architectural discussion, but um, if you're creating bases or you're creating multiple items that can inherit from each other, uh, it's important to note about keeping um, the section titles relatively the same so that it can group those fields all under one section. Um, instead of ending up with thousands of sections with different fields or, you know, maybe one field underneath one section title and then another field under another section title and it gets really confusing for your content editors this allows you to uh, have less confusion there so I'm just gonna start creating some fields um, so I'm gonna create a title field this is going to inherit from or use the field as uh, single line text which basically is just a text field that's a simple uh, single text box field um, there's a lot of other uh, field options in here, which I'm going to hopefully do a session on in the future. There's deprecated types, there's system level types, which are basically uh, system, system fields that are used for a lot of system level um, uh, templates. There's dev developer types, uh, which can be used for development. Um, there is link types, which is when you want to uh, use an item let's say you have a, a good example is uh, author so if you had authors to find somewhere else in your tree you could use a drop link or drop tree to allow the user to select that that item from another part of the tree um, this allows you to start you know this really allows you to get away from you know defining fields that are um, where you'd be putting multiple let's say you had contributors all over your all over your site um, and all over your articles and you just were putting in a name for that 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 uh, contributor or author um, let's say his name was Dylan um, 
if you're linking to the same item, you're allowed to then start building. You could build a page for your author. You could also, um, you don't have to worry about misspelling my name accidentally. One person could put D-Y-L-E-N and the next person could put D-I-L-L-I-A-N, uh, which is a common misspelling for my name. Um, this, so, so linking to the item just allows you to, you know, it's kind of, kind of cool because if you use a drop, uh, drop link, I believe it is, it's basically just a drop down. So you can say, hey, I want Dylan Young to be the author for this uh, uh, article, etc. Um, so that's, that's useful for that. Uh, there's list types as well, which are similar. Um, so these are, you know, multi lists, uh, tree lists, etc. I'll cover a lot of these in a different uh, thing. There's ones related to social and analytics, but uh, then there's kind of more generic uh, ones here. You can do a Word document, you can do a rich text, single line, number versus just a regular text box, which can be alphanumeric, whereas number can only be numeric. Um, integer, which is similar to number, um, you know, different fields here, dates, date times, files, etc. Uh, so I'm just going to select single line. I'm going to pick, uh, do a field for summary. And here again is another example of, um, since I want that to be more than just a, one quick line of text, I'll put it multi-line. But naming these, I like to keep them all as one word as well. So uh, when you're working with glass, um, if you auto-generate these, um, you're going to have to deal with the fact that it's going to have underlines uh, for spaces, which is not very pretty from a uh, developer standpoint. So I just like to make these all uh, one one word. Um, and let's just stick with that. Uh, there's more fields I could do. You could have a category field, which would be a, um, a either a drop list or a multi-list. Um, you could have, like I said, a contributor. You could have, you know, allows comments. You could do a lot of different fields here for the article itself. So I'm just going to save that. Um, as I talked about last time, you can do, uh, that's the wrong thing. Um, you can uh, set some insert options on these or some um, standard value tokens. So I could say dollar sign name to insert the name of the item, uh, things like that. So um, that's pretty much it for creating a template. One other thing I'd like to note is uh, creating insert options. So this is how you can control who can add what where. Uh, so let's say you're working on the blog. You want to, if you right click the blog, you want to be able to insert an article. Uh, so to do that, um, you can actually go to configure and under insert options, you can click sign and you can go and find that, that article and just select article. And now it will say that when you're on blog, you right click, insert new item, it's going to, or insert from template, it's gonna actually um, give you only that option of article. Um, you'll still have the option to insert from template, which will allow the user to select their own, but there's ways to disable that option. So see I insert, now I have the option to add an article. And I'll give it a name, cool name. And now it's just going to automatically put that in the title like we learned in our last session. So that's pretty much it for creating um, just a simple template. Um, some of the hierarch hierarchical concerns that you'll need to uh, keep in mind when creating a template. And, uh, you know, that's it. Uh, in our next next session, I'm hoping to also start covering glass and how this would work, how an article item would work with glass. Um, so, all right, that's it. Bye-bye.